Hello, I'm Amy Zawi with the Jerusalem Connection Red Alert Report for Wednesday, January 2nd, 2019. Happy New Year to you all. What's our resolution for 2019? How about some clear resolution? We probably all spent the last week listening to friends and families and celebrities on social media and on TV interviews espouse resolutions from losing weight to getting more involved in the community and a declared desire for peace on earth. I wanted to explore an interview I read recently published in Israel Today that reminded me of the interviews that I conducted myself in 2008, the last time I was in Israel, where I interviewed several Palestinian people uh, living in various territories and working uh, within Israeli-owned companies. The reason why this interview struck me so much is because as we discuss BDS and that movement and its outcry from social media and celebrities that the so-called Israeli occupation and the so-called oppression of the Arab people that results is simply not the case. For example, not only did the youngest woman doctor in Israel recently take her post she is an Arab Israeli. Tell me what woman in the PA region or in Gaza or in the surrounding um, countries of Israel had the opportunity and the educational avenues to pursue being an MD, let alone the right to pursue it. Only Israel offers this. But let's go back to the article. The last time I reported on the Arabs in the West Bank, Judea, and Samaria, they were enjoying working for Israel's companies because the pay is better, the working conditions are better, and the companies are under the employment laws of Israel. These workers freely admit that there is no uh, just unemployment law under the PA or in the Gaza area. And they do, and Gaza, uh, the Palestinian uh, company owners do as they please with their workforce and work conditions. Never mind the numerous reports I did how explaining that Israel and its people and organizations are often the first responders to various disasters worldwide, and they've innovated technology in the IT, medical, and counterterrorism sector that the entire world enjoys. Forget all that, let's talk about Gaza in particular. Gaza does have its autonomy under its own elected Hamas leadership, and the hope of peace was that Israel would retreat pulling Israeli families out of homes that they legitimately owned and purchased and relocating them all over Israel proper, where as many as several years later, these displaced families still lived in temporary housing or hotels. But let's talk about the Palestinians still in the Gaza Strip and the terror that reigns from it onto the civilian population of Sudorot and the Negev Desert. Ten or more years of post-traumatic stress disorder results on a generation of children and a devaluation of property in Israel because Gaza has its autonomy. The average Gazan, however, is not happy with its own leadership, and some actually would prefer to go back to the so-called occupation and, and as some of their brethren enjoy in the West Bank. They say this because the corruption is so obvious and complete with the Hamas government that there's no denying it and the mainstream media simply ignores it. For example, Egypt began pumping gas into the Strip at just over $9 a gallon. However, the Gazan government turns around and sells it to the people for $17 a gallon. The average Gazan cannot afford that. The average American couldn't afford that. That said, even, the Gazan Hamas, even if the Gazan Hamas government was replaced with the PA authority government, Gazans would not be pleased with that since they don't trust Abbas any more than their own leadership. They live in fear and oppression, paying dues and homage to a corrupt leadership that has no intention to looking out for the regular person. This interview V in the Israel Today report outright mentioned that many of his compatriots lived much better when Israel was controlled by Gaza, and that Abbas in the PA is proving to be no better of a leader. The preferable way, they say, given the current choices, would be to return to Israeli leadership. There is even hope in the idea that Egypt would take over the Strip. While Egypt may not have the same heart for the people in general that Israel does, the current president of Egypt at least, at least gives lip service for a freedom of ideas, a freedom of humanity, of religion, and tolerance, and dignity in human rights. We'll see how that pans out next door in Egypt as the years go on. On top of all of this, SodaStream, an Israeli company that has been the specific target of BDS efforts and activities, they have facilities in Judea and Samaria and employ many Arabs who identify as Palestinians. 
and these employees value their jobs. When the boycott of SodaStream came out, these very employees, who really didn't have a voice to express it, but when asked by certain hard-hitting journalists, they said they didn't want the company to go out of business and they didn't want to lose their jobs and they didn't want people to stop buying SodaStream. And on top of all this, SodaStream's CEO announced just last week that it wants to open a facility in Gaza and hire Gazans and give Gazans jobs. He, won, and on, he went on to say that if the Gazans have prosperity, prosperity le leads to peace. This is a real and valid and honest way to actually promote peace in the Middle East amongst the people. This is the exact opposite of results that the BDS movement and its actions bring about. So when up is down and down is up, I remember in the Bible it says the first shall be last and the last shall be first. I mention all this in the context of our Red Alert reports because anti-Semitism and BDS activities around the world are not just anti-Semitic and anti-Israel, they're anti-freedom. And by default, they're anti-Palestinian in their efforts to absolutely nothing to benefit or move forward the peace process or the condition of the Arab people in the region. In fact, the Palestinians are used as pawns and bait for the ultimate goal of hating Israel's existence. And many of its contributors, and for many of its contributors, the Jewish people in the Middle East at all, let alone on this earth. Free and just people everywhere do not fall folly to the deceptions and smoke screens that the activ activists who claim to be the agents of human rights and freedom consistently condemn Israel and Jews unjustly and unfairly with outright lies and lies of omission through the BDS movement. Make this new year your year of truth. Follow truth wherever you can find it. Social media is filled with commentary and wacky ideas. It's also filled with everyday folks like you and me just trying to get the truth out. Organizations with Facebook pages such as the Israel Project, Camera on Campus, Fighting BDS, the Jerusalem Post, Caroline Glick, individuals and organizations such as the ICEJ and the Jerusalem Connection, Writers, artists, artists, entertainers are all trying to share the truth with the world so that BDS activities on college campuses, on state houses, steps, and in the marketplace are called out for their lies and confronted for their hate. Shavua Tov. Have a happy week and have a happy new year. Until next time.